Here's the manager I've been playing as, Jen Eva Sieg. It's far from my best because I was having a bad day in regards to name creativity. I initially planned to use her in a joint Switzerland Liechtenstein build a nation save, but this ended up happening instead. She's a 21 year old former Liechtenstein women's international. Wait, does Liechtenstein have a women's team? Ah, first match in 2021. Immersion maintained. So her career began because the only club that was willing to hire her was DL Pro in Dalian, China. When the board neglected to tell her though, was that they were under a six month transfer embargo, the only players that they had on contract were the youth team, of which there were only 16 players, only two of them could play defence, there were four strikers, and so the board blamed Seager for the poor results of a group of 17 year olds who were nowhere near ready for senior football, and they fired her. And I desperately needed another opportunity to prove herself, which came in the form of Renofa Yamaguchi, who were on the verge of relegation to the J3 League in Japan. Seager saved the team from relegation, and in the following season secured promotion. With the Japanese season ending in November, and a dislike of the unnecessarily packed scheduling in the first half of the season, Seager immediately started looking at European teams hiring after a poor start to their season. She therefore moved to Estoril Praia in Portugal. This would be the start of a pattern of very short stays at clubs before moving to another new country. In Seager's second season, she guided the team to European qualification and witnessed her first ever wonder kid. A right back with two jumping reach, one strength, but a verifiable beast in almost every other aspect of his game. He'd eventually get sold to Aston Villa and, now that he's a premiership player, he was deemed unaffordable. My hatred for English finances will never go unspoken. After Estoril, I moved to Kalmar in Sweden, again a team that was struggling in the relegation zone despite having the quality for a much higher finish. This would be a recurring theme in Seager's career. Kalmar won the Swedish Cup in Seager's first season, with Europa League qualifiers secured. They drew Partizan Belgrade, and Seager selected both Kosovans in her squad for that match. The pair scored five goals in a 6-1 thrashing that effectively removed Serbia from European football for the rest of the season. In doing so, Seager demonstrated that she had no respect for geopolitics and UEFA's efforts to ease tensions between nations. The good times in Kalmar didn't last as a board takeover resulted in the cancellation of all affiliations with other clubs despite Seager's protest that this was a step in the wrong direction. Seager went to the press to say that she could no longer stay in Kalmar with a board that she believed was actively trying to hurt the club. The next day Kalmar were knocked out of the Europa League qualifiers by Copenhagen, which I'm pretty sure is the worst possible matchup for the fans. Seager's dissatisfaction saw her leave the club for the first opportunity and her successor took the team that she built all the way to the semi-finals of the Conference League. While her successor enjoyed success in Kalmar, Seager was in the Spanish second tier with Karuna, who were desperate to avoid relegation. Upon arrival, the club had 11 points in 16 games, and within weeks, Seager realised that she disagreed with Spanish football and its media culture. She made a public statement she hated being in the country, that she would only stay to fulfil her contractual duty of saving the club from relegation, and refused to do any media for the rest of the season. The end result of this was a feral final day that saw Karuna win the league on account of Spain's tiebreaker rules that prioritise head to head results over goal difference. I imagine this that every single football pundit and content creator went wild on the Zoro Karuna's success as Seeger committed to her word and noped the fuck out of Spain to take an offer in Italy with Lazio. The time in Spain also saw Seeger's first jump into international management, where she took over as Argentina's under 23 team for the Olympics, winning the gold medal before stepping down. As for Lazio, it became very clear very soon that I don't have the capacity to care about a large squad on huge contracts when I didn't assemble that squad myself. I quit Lazio within weeks for a less expensive roster in the Eredivisie with Groningen. Nothing noteworthy happened in the Netherlands that year. At this point, I feel like I should mention that I did actually have a plan for the save rather than just constantly bouncing between different teams, but the plan was evolving as the save went on. Firstly, upon realising how language learning works in FM, I decided to become an immense polyglot, collecting as many as possible. Secondly, the plan became to eventually settle down in Essen and devote the rest of my career to building up a new major city in German football. What's so special about Essen? Nothing. I used to live there, and in an effort to avoid doxing my former address, I have drawn a circle vaguely over the region that I spent two and a half years of my life. After Groningen, I was offered a job at Slavia Prague. I organised their team into a domestic powerhouse, where we didn't lose a single competitive fixture all season. How? I'm a boring meta bitch who goes to struggling clubs, says high pressure gig and press, and the team says hot damn, that might just work, and then it works. Anyway, my year learning how to speak Czech was mostly uneventful. Undefeated double, saw Jan Zina, won eight Manager of the Month awards and somehow didn't qualify for the top three in the results for Manager of the Year. I then traded in Prague for Club Bruges in Belgium, who finished the previous system in Europa sports but had the potential in their squads to play UCL. Gagan Press saw us win the league with games in hand, the Europa League on penalties, and somehow I was against my reserve team in the Kroki Cup final, thus completing a treble for the first time in my career. Living in Belgium, I took a second job as the manager of the Senegalese national side, and it was at this point that I realised that Seeker just plain hates France, because despite living in one French-speaking country and working for another French-speaking country, she still refused to learn a single word of French, preferring instead to pick up the Senegalese language of Wolof. Wait, do they? Do they speak French in Bruges? Oh, it's in the Dutch-speaking Belgium. Okay, so maybe her decision makes a little more sense. 
Regardless, when the season ended, Sega saw an opportunity to move to Turkey with Trabzonspor, who finished second in the previous season. This was an op easy opportunity for a third top flight title in a row, and for me to realise that winning three different top flights simultaneously didn't count as completing the Steam achievement. While I in Turkey, I decided it was almost time for me to settle down in Essen, so I started checking up on how the AI was handling my beloved third division side. The AI took them to the second division, in a third division that had become infested with Bundesliga reserve teams who were forbidden from being promoted any higher, it was now possible to finish 12th and secure automatic promotion. As for Trabzon, easy domestic double but I got destroyed in the UCL and just accepted my fate. Meanwhile on the international side I took Senegal to an AFCON win before switching to the Mexico under 23s, specifically to repeat an Olympic win before trading in that job for a role as the Serbian national coach. The Serbia job did not go well but at least I added multiple languages to my CV. I moved from Turkey to South Africa's Cape Town city and was planning to quieten down before my inevitable switch to Essen. Cape Town had a poor start to the season but eventually won both domestic cups finishing 5th in the league. While in South Africa I was optimistic of picking up multiple languages but only learnt Sozofo. It was time to move to Russia, with Spartak Moscow wanting. Shortly after arriving in Moscow I resigned as Serbia's coach. The straw that broke my back was a nil-nil draw to Estonia where we had 30 shots compared to their zero. I then took the Hungary national team job, despite knowing it would end up as frustrating as my time at Serbia, but at least it was one more language to learn. I was considering staying in Moscow until the Essen job became available, until I remembered that 10 years later Russia is still excommunicated from international football, my ticket out of this was to help Bristol City avoid relegation from the championship, a job I was excited for because I used to live in Bristol before I moved to Essen. I managed to pull Bristol from the relegation zone up to the very last qualification spot for the promotion playoffs and I barely scraped a ticket to the premiership from a 6th place championship finish. I put in a request to the board to improve youth recruitment, which they denied because apparently our financial situation was poor and we were close to debt, I accepted that reasoning and I moved on. Three weeks later they took out a 40 million mortgage loan to increase my transfer budget for the upcoming January window and I never asked for or wanted this. It plunged the club into full-blown debt. I barely managed to save their financial situation on account of selling and was left with players angry because I couldn't renew their contract because I physically couldn't offer them the wages that they were already on. On the plus side, in a cup match that went to penalties, we won because the penalties went on for so long that the same player for the other team missed two penalties. A few days later I found out that this actually happened IRL in the Europa League qualifiers a few days before it happened to me in the game. And one of my favourite matches of all time saw us FMing Spurs, who in this save are a team that's actually capable of winning trophies on a regular basis. In absolutely glorious fashion, where we were completely outplayed and won because of disallowed goals only. While at Bristol I took a job as the Saudi national coach because it was time to add Arabic to my linguistic palette. Eventually I was offered jobs from seven major nations and chose to switch from Saudi to Italy because one, the Asian Cup was for another three years and the entire point of being with Saudi was to win that, and two, Italy was offering 85,000 a week. As much as I was enjoying turning Bristol into a top division side, my hatred of the Premier League and its clown-shaped handling of player values took over and I knew I had to get out of there. I committed myself to finishing the season and determined that I would only stay for one more year if I qualified for Europe. We missed out on this by a single spot because Chelsea won qualification through winning the Carabao Cup, which my friend said should have been disallowed on account of there being an administration on the year that they won. I sought unemployment in preference to staying in England for one more year. After a summer in which I was offered interviews at Roma and Bordeaux, I took a job with RB Leipzig on the basis that I'd use it to temporarily get into German football before I switched to Essen permanently. I found a repeat of the exact same situation I had in Lazio, where I ended up choosing to resign in November. At this point I was tired and just wanted to settle down in my beloved rugby city that I was actually looking at the non-league teams in the city because I'd subscribed to the addition of the regional divisions on Steam Workshop. Thus in January of 2013 I found my forever home, RW Essen's city rivals ETB SW Essen, where I made a big song and dance about how my days of switching from team to team were finally over and I was finally ready to settle down and build something in one club for the rest of my career. And then as I was settling into life in the regional division as SWS and I received the news. May 2038, RWS and have been relegated to the Dritte Liga. Long-standing manager Florian Schoy has been fired. Now, if you haven't looked into lower league management on FM before, I highly recommend it. It's incredible. Down there, only three kinds of goals get scored. Bog standard set piece headers, worldies, and a new candidate for the possibly the stupidest thing that you've ever witnessed. There is no in between. So anyway, I made the mistake of creating a reserve team while still in the regional tiers because I didn't realise that this would automatically force the board to build a new stadium just for the reserve team. I didn't really understand why they couldn't just share ours because the under 19s were sharing ours as well, so why not the under 23s too? But alas, the damage was done and I plunged the club into a near half a million euro loan. This was where I got annoyed at features that aren't in the game because I was still the Italian national team coach when this happened, still on a wage of 85,000 a week with them while my full time job was a 500 a week in the Niederrhein. 
I fought surely, I'm wealthy as fuck, why can't I just foot the bill? Speaking of my role as the Italian national coach, we won the 2013 World Cup while I was working full time in Germany's fifth division? What made this funny was that whenever I'd win a regional tournament with SWSM, the media would drop lines such as this reminds fans of Sega's Italy side that lifted the World Cup and now she can add the prestige of Nita Rhine's Polkor to her cabinet. <laughs> Italy ended up firing me. We lost to France in the Euros because the group stage injured half our starting squad, and fatigue took out the rest. Germany hosted two major tournaments in a two year period which almost ruined my immersion. I noticed a pattern where I'd get Essen promoted, spend one season acclimatising to the increased level of play, and then the next season dominating the league. This repeated itself all the way up until the top flight where it took me four years to earn my first Bundesliga title. For some reason when my reserve team entered the regional leagues, the game read it as being in Schleswig Holstein. Here is a map pointing out how ridiculous that assignment is. I temporarily took on the Jamaican national team, but I gave up when I realised that I'd never overcome the giant of Mexico, and eventually I I moved to South Korea's national team for a year because I'd recruited a Korean wonder kid at Essen and I wanted to kickstart his international career with inclusion in the squad that would go on to win the Af Asian Nations Cup. After South Korea I said that I was done with international management until Spain rocked up in my DMs with a note that said 140,000 euros a week. Completed my first domestic double at Essen in 2045 when I picked up the DFB Pokal in possibly the dullest display possible and the Zweite Bundesliga title. In doing so I secured a Europa League spot before my first ever top flight match. Coincidentally, in real life, SW Essen holds the distinction of being Germany's first ever second division side to win the German Cup a feat that I unknowingly repeated. However, their real trophy win in 1959 was an addition of the tournament that only featured four teams, which I feel kind of diminishes the prestige of the victory. The only other team I can find that has repeated this feat was Hanover in 1992. This was also the year that Essen produced its first wonder kid, Kevin Hildebrand. My SWS inside then broke multiple records as soon as we entered the Bundesliga. Kevin became the division's youngest ever goalscorer when he bagged a free kick on his debut, but we also broke some rather unfortunate records too, in ways that guaranteed that we would go on to break them again. If, for example, the disciplinary record, which we broke multiple times, we also repeatedly broke the league's lowest attendance records. The previous record was 17,000 while our stadium had a max capacity of 15,000. So on multiple occasions in the first weeks of being a Bundesliga team I was notified that we had yet again broken that unwanted record. Along the way I was trying to kickstart feuds with other teams because the game only registered our city rival of Rolf Isis, and the Pokal provided me the ideal target, Borussia Mönchengladbach. They drew us in the quarterfinal when we were in the second division still, and their manager openly laughed at the press about how easy of a match it would be. His team then lost 2-1, I said skill issue and spent the rest of my career antagonising both him and the club. When Munch and Glovac were relegated a few years later, the media asked me if I was surprised to see them struggling. I laughed and said, I predicted that this would happen a long time ago. My pettiness knows no bounds. On the subject of rivalries, I found it curious that we never managed to establish one with Dortmund, considering the state of our matches and that we kept drawing them in cup competitions, with our first year in the UCL seeing us get drawn against them twice in both the league stage and the knockouts, for a grand total of five matches in a single season. Two of those matches were back-to-back -back away matches. The media asked how we had coped with the travel, and I had the chance to respond that we considered staying in Dortmund for the entire week instead of going home between the matches, which is a very amusing overreaction when you consider that Essen and Dortmund are approximately a 25 minute train journey away from each other. And the 2048 UCL season, the results of the next two titles were spoiled in the press build up to our first match against Malaga. A few years into being a Bundesliga side, I saw a kid that I had previously loaned from Milan who was rotting on their benches, so I decided to pick him up as a backup. Four months after getting him, I made the Champions League final for the very first time and somehow took a 2 0 lead against, as coincidence would have it, Milan. They came back to make it 2 2 in the second half, so for extra time I subbed off my exhausted Hildebrand for Juan Pena, who of course went on to score the winning goal in extra time, securing our first ever UCL win and somehow on the 150th anniversary of the club's establishment. After my first UCL win I went to the board to request a further upgrade to our use facilities, of which they said no. I came very dangerously close to risking everything in that moment and the only thing stopping me was I only had three seasons left for the sake of this video. A couple of weeks later the board then announced that they were upgrading the youth facilities like it was their idea all along. The cheeky twats. Oh and remember how I'm part-timing as the Spanish national coach? 2050 is a World Cup year. We went to Brazil, the host lost to the United States in the third place playoff, and then we took the title against England. 2050-51 to 51 was the season that I was given a club objective that I'd never seen before, and the weight of expectation that it offered was a little bit stressful. It was also the season that my reserve team finally got promoted to a national league. They were not ready for a national league. Two different Bundesliga teams hired managers named Gomez on the same day, which was kind of weird. My boy Cho Yong Su went away for the Asian Nations Cup, and I followed his progress with joy as one of my wonder kids won almost every individual award on his way to a 3-1 domination of Australia in the final. In this season we were then eliminated by Leipzig in the quarterfinals of the Pokal on penalties. We then pushed forward to the UCL semis where we lost to Man City. 
on penalties, which is for the best considering that the alternative if we had won would have been a rerun of last year's final, and nobody wants to see that. As far as defending my league title goes, it was close, but I finally got the three in a row achievement that I'd been hoping for for the last 20 years of this save. It was additionally sweet because our loss to Leverkusen in week 33 locked Munich out of a UCL spot, and frankly, I'm just tired of Munich's success, so any setback for them is a win to me. Despite a rough start to the league in the season that followed, we were crushing it in the cups, reaching both the Pokal and the UCL finals. The latter saw our new club captain and lead goalscorer Teddy Ivanov take two hat-tricks against Tottenham to keep us alive in the first leg and to decimate in the second, although that final 45 minutes did look a bit dicey. Side note, that first leg also saw the senior debut for our latest academy wonder kid, Luka Jankovic, who has been guaranteed a club record for all of history, coming on for the final 30 minutes of a game on his 16th birthday. In both cups, Dortmund were on the opposite side of the bracket for the semi-finals, and both times they lost, which set us up to face Inter Milan in the UCL. What is it about us and the Milan teams? And in the Pockel would face Mainz, who were battling for promotion out of the second division. The league was once again won to many a Bayern fans suffering, as despite having to take off two of our best players in the first 15 minutes due to injuries, we thrashed by in 6-1 to maintain our hold of the title and to push them out of next season's UCL. It was especially sweet as before the match we were four goals away from matching Dortmund's record for most goals scored in a season. Luka grabbed his first senior goal in the Pokal final. We then barely scraped a UCL win thanks yet again to a Teddy Ivanov masterclass. Nine goals in the last three UCL games. Those three hat-tricks took Ivanov from seven goals in the entire tournament to 16 and a golden boot. I won the Euros with Spain and I, then I saw that the Germany job was available so I declared interest out of frustration that my best boy Kevin Hildebrand was constantly having his morale crushed because the national system was snubbing him. In response to my declaration of interest, one journalist got really bitchy and said that I was desperate and clearly wouldn't get the job. I was just there like, look at my credential. I've won consecutive tournaments with Spain, two UCLs and four Bundesligas in the last five years alone. A manager with a CV like that declaring interest in a role would be every fan's dream. Right after I returned to the club from national duty, I received a 60 million plus bonuses offer from the Saudi league for one of my central midfielders. And thank God that happened because my academy is only capable of producing midfielders, but more importantly, after 840 hours of game time I finally got one of the most popular Steam achievements. It's actually ridiculous how long it took me to get this. I managed to become one part of the furniture before this happened, I witnessed my first ever bicycle kick goal about 40 hours before this happened, and it was a bicycle kick scored by my fucking right back of all people. The season that followed was possibly my most dominant league season with Essen so far. My youth investments were starting to show themselves as the star players and world beaters that they had potential to become, and we avoided the dreaded mid-season slump that so many experienced, and finally reaching the 30-year point of the save in mid-January, thus signifying that we're in the end game of this video. March gave us a youth intake that the early reports promised would be full of defenders, finally a year where we'd get a youth intake that wasn't focused on midfield, and the hottest prospect of the intake was another bloody midfielder in a sea of defenders. Alfred might also be a candidate for one of the best new gens ever if he only had a more positive personality. We rounded out March by losing in the quarterfinal of the Pokal on penalties to Freiburg, although to be fair, the Freiburg fans kind of deserved a win against us like that, especially considering what happened when we faced them in the league six weeks earlier. They would go on to win the trophy, and honestly, I'm happy for them. We would then go on to win the league again, and I witnessed a trophy lift where half of my team somehow forgot to show up despite having just played 90 minutes. And here we are, the final year of the save, this happens to be a Club World Cup year. And imagine my disappointment when the Club World Cup draw takes place, and this is the result that we're given. An opportunity to face teams from all over the world, and I get one from my own fucking country. We then won the UCL again. Newcastle simply weren't on our level as we took that win 3-1. And of course, when the Club World Cup comes around, I end up crushing it because I've been the most consistent European team in the last four years, and after one round of the knockouts, the tournament becomes a knockoff UCL. As is tradition, we face one of the Milan teams in the final, where we claimed a solid 4-1 win. Very soon, we'll be meeting Milan again, because we've been invited to a number of Spanish players' testimonials, and guess who's up first? So here we are, 30 years later, starting from getting fired in China for not having a good enough team, to the most dominant team in Europe. I'd, I'd, I'd say that I'm very, very happy with what I've, what's become of Essen since I joined them, I'm especially happy with how many languages that we managed to learn along the way, especially when all but one of them was picked up during the first half of the save. Overall stats, you'll see we worked for almost 5,700 days with only four days of holiday, enjoyed an overall career win rate of 65% across 1,670 matches, with over 4,100 goals being scored for us and just under 2,000 100 conceded against. I earned 9 promotions, won 18 leagues and 43 cups, finished with a total career earnings of 84 million euros. Save is also primed to grind out a few more of the Steam achievements if I just keep this manager going for a few more years. The next step for me once I've seen out Jen's career is that I actually want to keep playing on this save as a new manager. My current thought is to add a new manager in January 2055 and this is the lucky lady that I'll be going with. Narratively speaking I'm claiming that she is Jen's daughter and for the sake of variety I'm going to write myself a rule that I can't return to any country where her 
her mother had previously worked in, and that this next generation of Seeker will actually see out the contracts that she signs when she joins a team. And maybe when she's looking to settle down, this could end up turning into a build a nation save. Part of me is kind of tempted to go for Greece, but another part of me is thinking, Liechtenstein. Yeah, Liechtenstein. 